YouTube is littered with productivity videos. If you type in morning routine, you're just inundated with people jumping in on the hype train to get views, all competing to see who can wake up the earliest and spend the most amount of hours meditating while also doing sprint training. And look, even I've fallen for some of them. Andrew Huberman's become one of the biggest podcasts in the world, making content on hours of protocols, but there are websites that sell the notes to them because there's just so much content and so many different micro tweaks you could do that maybe would get you that 0.1% improvement that you're looking for. And as before we get into the apps that are selling you streamlined process into this world of supposed productivity. Maybe if you had the right combination of apps, you'd get that software job that you want. Now, don't get me wrong, I love these rabbit holes. I pull down them all the time. I've watched my fair share of David Goggins' videos. I've listened to my fair share of Andrew Huberman podcasts. But I think the problem is, is that we get obsessed with the small levers and we don't pay attention to the things that actually grow corn. The things that, for the time you put in, you get maximum return on investment. So in this video, I'm going to cover the morning routine that will actually change your life. The guy who is a living example of why that routine works and the apps that you can download so that this video is in clickbait. So I've explained in a previous video that when I first went to university, I kind of had that kick where I realized I had to start really getting productive or otherwise I wasn't going to be able to achieve the things I wanted to achieve, becoming a software engineer, getting the grades I needed to get into the job that I wanted. So I experimented with a lot of these ideas. You know, I used to do the, the 5 a.m. wake up and I'd go for a run. I'd eat at six o'clock in the morning while the whole house was asleep. And then at seven, I'd brutally tidy because it wasn't enough just to make my bed in the morning. I also had to make sure that the entire house was a clean slate. Maybe at 8 a.m. then I'd be pretty tired from doing all of this. So I'd sit down and watch TV for a bit and maybe show up to my lectures at about nine or ten. And to be honest, this actually did make me more productive. I was way better than somebody who was completely unstructured because before this, you know, I'd play video games till one in the morning and then I'd wake up at maybe 10 a.m. the next day and just go about my life. At least this brought some structure, but it was by no means the best or optimal. And you've probably seen so many variations of essentially the same thing. Just people swapping out, swapping things out and deciding when the best time to wake up is. All of these are good, and I'm not going to knock any of them because I've tried them and they work. And the chances are if you found something with a lot of views, with a lot of positive responses in the comments, that that's a video that genuinely has helped people and it's probably worth listening to and trying. But if you're actually going for performance and you're trying to compete in the current software engineering market, you do need to be ahead of other people. You do need to put in the work. And of all the productive morning routines I've tried, probably the highest leverage one is Alex or Moses because he cuts the bullshit. The problem is with a lot of morning routines is these are done by people who have already made it. They're not in the trenches actually working hard trying to make something. They've already had their success and now they can afford to wake up and spend the first two hours reading the Kama Sutra and and trying to manifest a better life. So listen to this morning routine and listen carefully because he's gonna be quick. See how you do, remove two, see how you do. The fundamental equation of productivity, how much you do, multiply, by how much leverage you have on the stuff you do. If we're defining those things as the equation for productivity, then the perfect morning routine should be one that maximizes the volume of work you do and the leverage that you create from the volume. And so for me, that looks like waking up, having a cup of coffee and getting to work and then ordering my day in the order in which I have the highest leverage activities to the lowest leverage activities. And if it's that simple. He wakes up, he has a cup of coffee, and he gets to work. The only difference I would make is, is sunlight. I don't want to deep it too much, but if you're the kind of person that struggles to wake up in the morning, one of the highest leverage things that you can do for that is immediately sunlight, because it's, it's setting your circadian rhythm so that the next time you wake up, your, your cortisol levels spike and your brain's actually awake when it should be awake, which is when you want to wake up, right? So maybe get up, see sunlight, coffee, work. But if you wake up fine, that doesn't really apply to you. Just just do the wake up, coffee, go. If you want an example of this, somebody that I look up to quite a lot is the Primogen. This, is, this guy's an absolute machine. He's a Vim power user, very productive Netflix software engineer. You know, he's he's done the work. He's got to the top and he, he preaches that the way you get to the top is you do a lot of work. And here he actually gets asked the question. Uh, so what's a typical morning routine look like for you? So I go with the Alex Hermosi morning routine. And that is I wake up at, say, 530, 6 o'clock, whatever time I wake up. I wake up, walk out, hit the coffee, pour it in, go straight to work and work until like 10 or 11 or 12. No breaks. No, there's no warm up routine. None of that. Just go straight there. And just for reference, it's this guy. You can see his key presses down at the bottom right, and if you look at the left, you might be able to make out what he's doing. It's pretty crazy. This is a guy that's mastered editing text, let alone code. 
So what's the core message here? Well, there's another very viral person that I think people tend to miss the point that he's actually trying to get across. And that's the man who's going to carry the boats himself. You! Who's going to carry the boats and the logs? That's you, but... So if you don't know who this is, it's David Goggins. He's become exponentially famous for being the guy that does things that seem impossible. He had the world record for pull-ups. This guy would show up to relay ultramarathons, which I've failed to run an ultramarathon, and it is hard. He shows up to them where you're running 50 to 100 kilometers, and then you tag in a friend, and then they run 50 to 100 kilometers, and then another friend does it, and it's five people in a row, right? And at the end of it, you've completed, say, 500 kilometers. This guy showed up with no team and did it by himself. And what you'll notice about this guy is he's been on maybe four, four or five podcasts in total. And look, five years ago. So he went on a couple five years ago, and then I think he did a couple more recently. And you'd think, okay, this is the guy that, that understands how to be productive, right? Because you don't do the pull-up world record and you don't run 500 kilometers without being extremely dedicated and hardworking, without putting in the work every single day. So what's his morning routine? What's his secret? What 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 productivity apps does he have on his on his I think iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's not even the latest one, is it? His, I his iPhone 15 Pro Max. Well, from the theme of this video, I hope you, you've you already worked that out. He doesn't have one. He just does the work. He gets up, he works on what he's working towards, and then he goes to sleep. Now, I wouldn't recommend David Goggins as the way to live your life, because there's more to life than just working from when you wake up till when you go to bed, obviously. But the point is, is that do you think you're doing a below average amount of work, an average amount of work, or an above average when you're competing with people who may be working 10, 11 hours a day. Especially if you're at the beginning of your career, maybe you, sh you should be sacking up a fair amount of your personal time because you you're competing. And if you don't do it, somebody else is gonna take that place, work harder than you, and get more results. And the people getting results aren't wasting the first three hours of their day, they're getting straight to it. The biggest thing that helped me progress towards my ultra marathon wasn't how many minutes I'd meditated that month, and it wasn't how many cold showers I'd had, it was how many hours a week w was I clocking running. That was the biggest effector. Sure, the cold showers were helping with recovery, but definitely wasn't the main thing pushing the thing. And the same is true of software engineering. The main thing that got me good at software engineering was working from nine to five, and then in my first couple of years, when I didn't know what I was doing because I didn't have a background in tech, I was learning from when I got into when I went to bed. I don't do that now. I work hard nine to five, and then... I spend a couple of hours making YouTube videos, and then I get outside. I go do other things. I go down to the pub and have a pint, because I can get away with it without ruining my 5k time, because I've given up on running now. Okay, so I promised it, what are the apps that actually will make a difference? I kind of undersold it when I said about David Goggins, because if you remember Alex Hormozzi's statement, it was, I wake up and I do the highest leverage things I can in that order. So I start with the, the most important things and work my way through until it's the least important things. And I completely agree with that philosophy. It's exactly what I do. I wake up and I have I have a to-do list. But I don't have a to-do list in isolation. I have a calendar because obviously when I'm working nine to five, I'm not doing the items on my personal to-do list. And when I'm in my spare time, I'm not doing my work to-do list because that's for work, right? So I have two separate to-do lists and a calendar. And I like to use Google Tasks because of its integration with calendar. So here's how it looks. You've probably seen Google Calendar before, but maybe you haven't opened the task tab. So I have both the apps on my phone, I have the Google Calendar app and I have the Task app. So I get the notifications when they come. And I'll write on my phone and also I'll write on the calendar view like this. I never have it set to month, I only have it set to day. So I can only see what I'm doing today. Because there's no point worrying about what's tomorrow, let's just get as much done today as we can. So every time I have things to do, I just add a task. And at the beginning of the day, when there's no tasks on my on my day list, I just drag them in because you'll have this un unscheduled list, right? And you can click and drag into your day and it will schedule it and then it will order this list by what comes first. And you just start ticking boxes. It's that simple. And it's actually quite a nice thing for unloading what's in your mind because you probably have things like, oh, I need to go shopping just in the back of your head and oh, I need to make that phone call. Instead of holding these things in your head, just type them into your task list and then you know at some point, say tomorrow, you're going to schedule things and you're going to go through that list and you're going to think, right, what are the highest leverage things that I need to get done now? And at some point, you're going to get round to that task that needs doing. If there's no food in the fridge, the highest leverage thing for you, <laughs> that you can do is probably go is probably go shopping and it's going to end up being scheduled in the day when you can get to it. And that's it. Wake up, get to work on your tasks. And then you'll suddenly find that when it comes to the late evening when you're done working 
and you feel like enough is enough and you will feel like enough is enough because if you've truly been productive for a full day you'll be tired and you'll be able to sit down on the couch watch some netflix and feel wow today was a good day i got a lot done and you'll notice that when you go to bed you'll fall asleep much quicker because i think a lot of people are underperforming without realizing it you'd be surprised at what the upper limit of how much work you can get done is this kind of philosophy and workflow is exactly what got me from working in construction finance to becoming a software engineer because i was working on it I, i'd work early till late in construction study till late for software engineering it's what got me to my ultra marathon i'd run for like five six hours at a time right like i'm no stranger to hard work and these are these are all the tools that you need sure you can start tweaking and modifying but this is the bulk it's just get to work so you might be wondering, okay, well, I've got into a pretty good system of just sitting down and getting to work. How can I get more out of each hour that I put in? Well, I actually made a video about efficiency as a software engineer and the tools that I use to be more efficient with the time that I put in. If you're working eight, nine, 10 hours a day coding, then you want every hour to get <laughs> to be as valuable as possible, right? So if you click this video here, I'll show you how I got into things like Vim and, and workflow optimization. I hope that video helps. Cheers.